and welcome back to the North Star Takes podcast with Bailey Polinky and Jacob Liberta. You can find all our videos here on our channel, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, also, reach out to your sports-loving friends and spread the word about us as well. Today, we're going to be talking some more Timberwolves as uh, yes. Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell have uh, gathered the whole squad to come practice together in Miami, have a sort of a little bit of a mini camp before their training camp starts here in a couple weeks. Um, overall, I really like this idea. It kind of shows, I think, that they're willing to embrace that leadership role. I think they're serious about winning this year, which, I mean, you can question if they were, you know, before or not. But I think this year there's more of an emphasis on it. I think um, Chris Finch bringing in a new attitude, a new mentality certainly helps with that as well. You have Anthony Edwards, who's appearing to be a young stud, um, flourishing last season in his rookie season. So overall, I guess, what are your um, impressions and um, thoughts, I guess, about the Timberwolves all getting together as a team here before the uh, training camp starts? I think this is great for team camaraderie and just getting excited for the season, getting all the guys together to hopefully gel and really start to hopefully – iron out any hiccups they might have as far as chemistry on the court goes or as much as possible because then you minimize it on, in actual games as much as possible so i think that could get us started on the right foot when the regular season rolls around or you don't have like a ramp up period hoping this can serve as like a ramp up period even though finch won't be there like it'll still be good for these guys to play together because in the end it's going to come down to them anyway finch can do a lot but at the mm -hmm. same time it's going to come down to the guys just performing and playing well together so i think it's huge too from the standpoint of like you mentioned cat and d'lo really taking on the leadership role here mm -hmm. and uh taken upon themselves to get the team together and basically make sure everybody's on the same page to um, hopefully make a playoff push this season and get back to the playoffs for the first time and was it now four years and then be uh be the second time since 2004 so yeah. I think I think that this is a huge step in the right direction towards just building a team that that plays well together yeah I agree with you there and honestly I don't know if Finch is going to be there or not because I saw a picture of Gerson Rosas is down there Oh, um, there's okay. a picture of him hugging some of the players showing up there, specifically D'Angelo Russell, which I thought was interesting because yeah. if the Timberwolves are putting out a picture like that on their social media, then I would guess they're probably not trading D'Angelo Russell. But uh, I guess you never know when it comes to that. But, yeah, I think it's just a great move overall, whether or not it was kind of like, I don't know if like Gerson said, hey, this might be a good idea, or maybe these two just truly did it on their own, which I'm really hoping is the case. But, I think either way, this is just a huge step in the right direction. I mean, this is the kind of stuff this team needs in order to make that next step because in years past, um, they had gotten together. Made, I think there was one year they went to the Bahamas together, but I don't know if they really did much like basketball activity during that. Mm -hmm. um, last year, obviously, with COVID, they didn't get together at all, and people came into camp out of shape, um, zero chemistry whatsoever. Players were getting hurt left and right at the beginning of the season. So it was just kind of a disaster last season. And I, I think this is a good step for this season to at least get started on the right foot. How about you? Yes, absolutely. I think this is critical towards, yeah, like like we've been saying, just team chemistry and really getting everybody or making sure everybody's probably, I mean, this might sound a little silly, but at the same time you have to question when you have guys like Wancho coming into camp last year out of shape. Like we can really see what this team looks like yeah. before we start to like, set too many expectations that the team might not be, re be able to reach if these guys come in here out of shape or just not looking good. So I think that's another thing to consider here with bringing this team together and hopefully it'll give everybody a, a clear idea of where, what this team is capable of right from the jump here. Yeah, absolutely. And I, another thing I thought was interesting too, they only posted like three photos, I think on their team's Twitter page. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the background, you could see Jared Vanderbilt, who is currently not under contract, and you could also see Leandro Bolmero, who is currently not under contract. So it, it kind of makes you assume that, I mean, it's been the assumption all along that those guys are going to end up signing with the Wolves. Mm -hmm. But it, that, I think that just kind of further confirms that, like, these guys are going to be a part of the team, at least for now. Um, but, yeah, I like that they're bringing everyone in. Um, hopefully, like, Jordan McLaughlin ends up going, too, if they're still thinking about bringing him back. Mm hmm so, yeah, I'll be curious. I'm kind of interested to see, like, what all gets posted, you know, whether it's on the players' Instagram stories or if it's Timberwolves' uh, team account as well. Just kind of see, like, what actually they're doing down there, um, how they're bonding, <clears throat> what kind of uh, 
interesting and entertaining things Ant will do while he's down there. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure he'll have something hilarious to say. So, um, going back to the leadership question, though, do you think mm-hmm. that Cat and Delo, by doing this, are are signaling that they're willing to take more of a leadership role on? Do you think that they just kind of think that they have to do it because they're um, the two centerpieces of the team, if you will? Um, I guess, do you think this is more of a force thing or do you think that these guys are, you know, taking that onus on themselves to um, bring this team together? I'd like to think that they're taking it upon themselves to do this. Like it's not really forced. I mean, I guess you'll never know for sure, but at the same time, I just think that these guys are, I think they realize they have a star with them with Anthony Edwards. It's only to get better and better every mm-hmm. year and probably turn into a top 10 player. Like we mentioned, possibly top five, but you never know what kind of ceiling he's got. So I think when they, realized that at the end of last season. I think they they really understood that this team actually has pretty high potential and there's a lot yes. of possibility there to make some noise in this Western Conference that maybe they wouldn't have thought of even a year ago. So I think that they're pretty excited with the direction this team's going in. I mean you got Metal World Peace coming out to the uh, <laughs> coming out to the public and saying yes. D Lo's a killer and he's Metal gonna World be, Peace. He's gonna be a champion. You know, that's that's you can't can't get much better than that as far as uh praise from the outside world so i i i'd say i'm i'm thinking that these guys are ready to take another step but i obviously will believe when we see it but i think i think this is more of a them just taking upon themselves not really any outside influence there what, what are you thinking bailey or do you think this is more of a force thing i i'm with you i'd like to think that it's them doing this on their own i think cat kind of has that in him a little bit he's I'd say he's more of a silent leader, but he's more of the type to like gather everyone together. Um, I think he likes to bring people together, but he doesn't like to be outspoken. He'll do everything by the scenes. Yes. So I think that's kind of the vibe I've gotten from him because I think he also kind of organized that Bahamas trip a couple of years ago when the whole team went down there. So Mm -hmm. I think he's kind of, I think he kind of enjoys doing that sort of stuff. And I think, you know, obviously him and D-Lo being good buds, um, the two, the two, you know, they're basically the two veterans on the team now, obviously outside of Patrick Beverly. Yeah. Um, the two guys I think this is huge for, though, is Malik Beasley and Jaden McDaniels because they're going to be the extra – or not the extra, but like the uber role players. You know, They're going to be extremely important role players. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a guy like Beasley who ended up you know, missing a lot of time at the end of last season with an injury, then he spends all summer in jail. <laughs> it's like now <laughs> – now he can now now he can you know spend some time with the team get back in the groove you know get back with all the guys kind of rebuild some of that chemistry because honestly he wasn't a part of a lot of it last season so I think it's huge for him to come back and have that as well um, maybe he feels more comfortable settling into like a six man role um, just spending more time with these guys obviously Jade McDaniel seems like a very quiet guy maybe this helps him come out of his shell a little more so I think I think overall this is really going to help everybody you know Pat Bev hopefully is there with them. Um, they get to meet him and see what he's all about. I just, I think overall, this is just going to be a great experience for a lot of these role guys as well. Yes, I totally agree. I'm glad you brought that up, honestly, because guys, especially Malik Beasley and Jay McDaniels, I think they could be the X factors to this season. If let's say we're assuming and, and Edwards, d and Cat are all staying healthy. They're going to play the whole season. I feel like what could really make or break us as far as being like a fringe playoff team to being a clear playoff team with potential maybe to win a series or something like that. Yeah. I think Beasley and McDaniels could be what puts us over the top, gives us that extra edge as far as depth goes beyond a big three like every team has. Usually it could come down to that depth if if you have if you're assuming your big three is already on the floor. So right. I think that that's a very important thing to consider. And like you said, Beasley obviously hasn't had a lot of playing time with these guys in um recent days. So I think this is good to get him back into the fold and um then again mcdaniel's too a growing player he obviously shows a lot of promise and i think mm-hmm. uh, we just got to f- find his role for this this current group so i think i'm, I'm really excited to see what what's in store for those guys yeah absolutely i just this is easily the most excited i've probably ever been for a timberwolves team and it could be false hope i don't know but <laughs> I know, it feels like that every year but <laughs> it really does but yeah that just it seems like everything is finally coming together and as long as people can stay healthy Mm-hmm. I just think they have a – I wouldn't say a special season, but I think they have a good season in store for this squad, and I think they can, you know, keep building in the right direction. And it would be a shame if they, you know, missed the playoffs and then had to, you yes. know, end up trading Cat or something because he wants out or D-Lo. And then you're kind of like rebuilding again around Ant and McDaniels, and I don't know. I just – it'd be nice to see it all come together this season because it kind of has to for 
um, the cat and D low part of this equation. Exactly. I know it'd just be so frustrating to have to rebuild again or reload, whatever you want to call it. Cause we have basically have to trade everybody. If we decide that this D low cat pair can't win. So I, mm-hmm. uh, that'd be so, yeah, that'd be pretty aggravating. That'd be just so disappointing. There's any bad adjective you could think of really. I, yeah. I, I just don't want to, I want to get to a point where we're just moving forward. We're not moving back again. And we've had that happen how many times for the last nearly 20 years. So I'm I'm done with that. (laughs) Yeah, I hear you, man. It's just at some point it's got to happen for this team. They got to start building a contender, not even necessarily a contender, but at least a winning team. At least least do what the wild and Vikings have been doing. So I think, I think it's certainly attainable, but um, yeah, we'll get into that more next time, but that's going to do it for this edition of the North star takes podcast. Um, once again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We really appreciate all the support we've gotten, especially on our Timberwolves videos over the last couple months here. Yes, sir. Um, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, we appreciate communicating with fans as well, um, hearing their thoughts in the comments. And also, yeah, leave comments below in this video. Um, what you're most excited about for this upcoming season, how you feel about the, the team getting together in Miami. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.